in this case, it's it's understood that that it's the testing is what has caused the reindictment. If the defense doesn't have a chance to do the testing on the weapon, you know, at the beginning, and they've destroyed the weapon, do they have a due process issue here? Some kind of a fairness argument saying you can't destroy evidence without letting us know. Bruce Rivers sees the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers sees the criminal lawyer. Bruce Rivers sees the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board-certified criminal defense lawyer, your very own personal. I mean, I'm here at your service. And also is our content genius, Michael Rivers, who's behind the camera, behind every deal that I ever came up with. Uh, so today we are we're reacting to the news of Alec Baldwin being re-indicted on the charge of involuntary manslaughter in the New Mexico court uh, near Santa Fe for the uh, untimely death of uh, Alina Hutchins, who is his uh, one of his film directors, or director of photography, what, yeah, on the film set of Rust. So we're going to dive into the new developments in this case and exactly why he was reindicted. But before we get to that, this is brought to you by eForms.com. eForms.com is a very effective way to avoid people like me. For example, if, uh, if your grandmother is living in your basement and she's a rapper and she's looking for you know, a huge contract, she can write up her own agreement. She doesn't need to go to a lawyer like me who would charge her a lot of money. So you just go to eForms.com. And, you know, because my grandma thinks she's a rapper, guess who needs to do power of attorney for grandma because she's kind of losing it? I guess I do. So I went on to eForms.com. You download the form. You get, you know, you can do rental agreement. You can do any kind of legal form that you need. And guess what? These are legally enforceable documents, and it protects you. So eForms.com, a very effective way to avoid the high cost of a lawyer and be able to get something done legally. It doesn't matter what it is. Or e you know, anything that requires a legal form Go to eForms.com. Okay, so Alec Baldwin now has been reindicted, and one of the reasons he was reindicted is because of testing that they did with the firearm. Now, let's let's talk about what he's indicted with and kind of the theories behind those charges, and then why now. So, there's two charges: involuntary manslaughter, negligent use of a firearm. That honor about October 21st in Santa Fe, state of New Mexico, at Bonanza Creek Ranch, located 545, blah, blah, blah. That uh, he did cause the death of Helena Hutchins in the commission of a negligent use of a firearm, an unlawful act which did not amount to a felony, a fourth degree felony, contrary to New Mexico State uh, Annotated Statutes, 1978, uh, Section 30-2-B, 1994. So that's the first one, negligent use of a firearm. The second count is without due cause, a caution, or a circumspection. Committed by the total disregard or indifference of the safety of others, and the act was such that an ordinary prudent person would anticipate the death might occur under the circumstances a fourth-degree felony. That's a little bit different. It's unclear what theory the state has chosen to go forward with. You know, it, is it the actual act or is it the management of the whole thing? Now, the day before, there was a guy that walked off the set because of safety concerns. He's going to be a witness in this case. If you're talking about the overarching safety that he's responsible for, guess what? I didn't realize this, but there were two misfires before this happened. That is something that you that frames... The argument. But in this case, it's, it's understood that, that it's the testing is what has caused the reindictment. Now, remember, I don't know if you remember this, but and we're going to show a little bit of it now. We did some testing of our own. We went to a gun range and I took a, a replica of a Colt 45 Peacemaker. And let's play a little bit of that now. Back and it just went. Well, you can see by pulling the trigger back, there's a click. And you cannot fire this gun. So that first click is the safety. I'm pulling on the trigger right now, and you cannot fire it. The first click is the safety. You pull it all the way back, then it fires. One click, it doesn't fire. 
You put all the way back. Now, one of the things they did in the testing, first of all, they destroyed the gun. They tried to get the gun to fire without pulling the trigger. Now, these are what we call a single six. Single action, six cylinder. And it's got a little door on the side of the cylinder. You cock the, the handle back just a little bit, and you feed it that way. And, and so what they did was that they pounded on it until the thing would fire without, without pulling the trigger. And the only way they could do that is they pounded on it with a hammer and abused the gun, and then they broke the actual gun instead of... And I think unless they notified the other side... Let's, if they did not notify Alec Baldwin's team that they were going to destroy a piece of evidence, that destruction of the evidence may be fatal to the state's case. If they sent them, we're going to do this testing, you can be part of it if you'd like. And it may destroy the piece of evidence. At that point, the evidence is what it is. And this, if the defense says yes and they're part of that, then they acquiesce to it and then they waive any argument. However, if they didn't notify the defense, they go ahead and do that, and the defense has never had an opportunity to test the firearm, and now they're charged, is that piece of evidence even going to be able to come into court? There's a possibility, I think, that there's an ar- there certainly is an argument, and it's called spoliation of evidence, that, you know, that the government has done something. But be that as it may, let's just go back to what we're talking about here. Alec Baldwin is now charged because of the testing that was done. And I just showed you on this peacemaker, that trigger that, that hammer doesn't go forward without pulling the trigger. And the trigger doesn't do anything unless that hammer is pulled back. So let's kind of look, at, and why is this important? Well, what kind of hats do I sell? We, we sell, sell this message, stop self-snitching. So let's go back in time to when Alec Baldwin was talking to George Stephanopoulos. I think the big question, and the one you must have asked yourself a thousand times, how could this have happened? Now, guess what? Anything he says is fair game, and it's right there for everybody to see. If this is my client and he's on TV like this, I'm pulling my fucking hair out. There's no way he should be on TV talking about anything. Because guess what? The first time I want anybody to hear my client's statement is when they're on the stand. But let's see what he has to say. Well, there's two things I want to say about that. One is that when I talk about this, my concern is that I don't sound like I'm the victim. Then what are you doing on TV? You know, all you're doing on TV is, is protecting your public image. Was precipitated on one idea, and that is that Helena and I had something profound in common. And that is we both assumed the gun was empty, other than those, you know, uh, dummy rounds. Now, keep in mind that a guy the day before had walked off the set because of safety concerns. And they had two misfires prior to that. So... And now Alec Baldwin has said, I don't want to be the victim here, but I I assume the gun was empty. Hey, just a shout-out to our sponsor, Step One. Now, Step One is, I've always told you, they're high performance. Let's say you're Alec Baldwin, and you're sitting there in the hot seat getting grilled by George Stephanopoulos. Number one, you got to walk to the interview, right? And, you know, with those tree trunks he's got, is uh, you know, they you got to chafe like I'm not with Step One. Of course you're not, because there's a lycra panel and it avoids chafing. Sitting there, and you're in the hot seat, and you're pretending to cry and you're kind of really nervous because you got criminal charges pending are you going to sweat of course you're not going to sweat because it's made from viscose material derived from bamboo if you run play sports if you do anything if you got a couple of tree trunks as legs and and you go like this and shape you're going to want these step one they're amazing underwear i wear them all the time i'm wearing them right now i can't even feel them they're so good and now, if you order some of these, guess what? Only my people get 25% off. So you order a bunch. If you don't like when 30 days, you get your money back. But that isn't going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to change your life with step one. You're going to order these. You're going to replace everything you ever wore. So step one, get some. So one of the things you need to look at in, in an involuntary manslaughter case 
is the, the mindset of the person that's being charged. Okay, so in some instances, it's culpable negligence, but in a sense, it's knowing what's going on and acting in reckless disregard, you know, on that one part. He had, Alec Baldwin had some safety training with, uh, with Elena, or not Elena, but with the armor, and he also had other information that came to him and, and keep in mind, he's a co-producer of this movie, so he's he's at the top of the food chain, and he had other information. The night before, this this uh, uh, one of the people on the set quit because of safety concerns. Let's hear, hear a little bit about that. The, 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 the people on the film. The first time I heard that there was any problem with anybody uh, in the crew of the film was when Luber said, "Well, we have some issues here." Lane Looper, the first camera assistant, would email production managers a resignation letter later that night, citing safety concerns. Quote, during the filming of gunfights on this job, things are often played very fast and loose. So far, there have been two accidental weapons discharges. He also wrote about concerns about reasonable rest and housing for local crew with long commutes to the set. If you, if you know anything about Alec Baldwin, you know anything about these interviews, he often, he, he tries to come off conciliatory, but often paints himself in a very sunshiny light. And Alec posted this on Instagram. And I want to say to the people in IATSE, do what you need to do. You want to go on strike? Go on strike. That has nothing to do with the safety concerns going on on his set. I'll tell you something about the executives. They don't give a about you. He said, because we have some issues here. I said, such as? And he said, my men need a better hotel room. There was no mention of safety issues. But there is a mention of safety issues in his, uh, in his letter. What really is important is what he says about the firearm itself. So one of the things that Alec Baldwin does in this interview is he goes through and he says she's directing him on the shot. Now she's the director of photography. So let's and and this is what you don't want. These are facts related to a homicide. You don't want him talking to the media at all. At all. Oh, this just drives you crazy as a defense lawyer. But let's listen to what he says show her she's standing next to the camera she's like this you or me she's got a monitor here the camera is here filming that way she takes a monitor that his that is his monitor the operator and turns it toward her it swivels and she says to me hold the gun lower go to your right okay right there all right do that now show it a little bit lower and she's getting me to position the gun everything is in her direction She's guiding me through how she wants me to hold the gun for this angle. And I, I draw the gun out, and I find a mark. I draw the gun out, and I find a cock. You hear that last part? He has no cock. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, did you hear that last part? I don't cock. I don't cock. There's no way, no way on God's green earth that that firearm misfires if you don't cock it. And what's really urgent is the gun wasn't meant to be fired in that angle. So if you're shooting directly into the camera lens... You're There's no way the gun fires without him cocking the gun. You're not aiming I'm not shooting into the camera lens. I'm shooting just off. Just off. Right. In her direction. I'm holding the... But I'm not shooting it. I mean, but he's saying he's shooting it. The gun where she told me to hold it, which ended up being aimed right in below her armpit, was what I was told. I don't know. This was a completely incidental shot, an angle that may not have ended up in the film at all. But we kept doing this. So then I said to her, now in this scene, I'm going to cock the gun. And I said, do you want to see that? And she said, yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. So one of the things that, the, remember what we showed you, you know, you, that first cock is a safety. It doesn't happen. And it doesn't go past that un unless you pull the trigger. And him committing here to the fact that he didn't pull the trigger and all of a sudden you get the testing with the firearm that's saying that's not possible, he lacks credibility on that issue 100%.
I let go of the hammer, the gun, the gun goes off. At the moment. The decisive that was the moment. moment the gun went off, yeah. That was the moment the gun went off. It wasn't in the script. Okay, let's just say what he says is true. You have this gun pointed at somebody, and if you do this with this gun, hang on, let me just, yeah, it's, you can do it with this. You can't do it without with the, uh, with the Colt 45 Peacemaker. You can't do it, and we demonstrated that you can't do that in the gun range. So when you look at why they indicted uh, Alec Baldwin, there's two things going on. His personally handling the weapon, and then his overarching responsibility for the safety on set. And he, he's he got uh, an initial appearance uh, you know, that he's going to have to make, or I think they can do this without it, uh, without him appearing, and then they'll probably do it that way. And then they'll set the case up for trial. He was looking at 18 months, $5,000 fine. So in the broad scheme of things, it's not, you know, a huge amount of time. Now, the armor is going to go to trial in February. And I guarantee you, if his lawyers know what they're doing, they're going to be attending that trial. Because guess what? That's going to be an opportunity for them to take notes and see exactly what the state's theory of the case is and who the witnesses are going to be and what their testimony is going to be. And they'll probably order a transcript of everything. Uh, You know, I love cases like this because it is not really an issue about what happened. It's about what does it all legally mean? Although there is one dispute of fact, and that's what Alec Baldwin's talking about. So if the defense doesn't have a chance to... um, do the testing on the weapon, you know, at the beginning, and and they've destroyed the weapon. Do they have a due process issue here? Do they have a some kind of a fairness argument saying you can't destroy evidence without letting us know? My guess is that they didn't know they were going to break the firearm, and uh, so there may be some issue there to litigate uh, at the outset, but it's all teed up. And we'll see where this goes. So Alec Baldwin re-indicted, and he's re-indicted based on the testing that they did with the firearm. And they're going to take that testing, and they're going to smack that right up against his testimony or his his interview with George Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. He doesn't look good, you know, against that testing. But is that testing ironclad? I don't think it is. Uh, and the fact that they destroyed the weapon, if they did it without including the defense in on the testing, that could be a major, major issue because that is the firearm that was, you know, that was fired the bullet that killed Alina Hutchins. So we'll see you next time here in Criminal Lawyer Reacts. We'll follow this case. Um, I don't know that there are going to be court, uh, cameras in the courtroom on this one, but it'll be interesting because it's, it, you know, I don't care who you are, you don't point a weapon at somebody unless you intend to kill them. You just don't. And so it's that part of it that is one of the charges. And then I think his overall arching um, role as a producer and the safety concerns. And, and that all that's a little more of a messy uh, type of a case, but that is what, is what it is. So we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board-certified criminal defense lawyer. Um, Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon. And uh, between me and uh, our content genius, Michael Rivers, thank you for watching. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my god?